To be creative, you need an independent mind. And Ronan Skillen is a musician who definitely marches to the beat of his own drum. In this case, the drum includes the tabla, which he first encountered in South Africa. His travels around the world have brought him back to our country, and he chatted to Michelle about music as a universal medium. Ronan Skillen doesn't just play music. He thinks, breathes, and lives it. He believes that music is more than simply a sound produced with instruments. For him, it's a way of tapping into the universal rhythms of nature. And even silence has its ghost notes. Born in Northern Ireland, Ronan grew up in Germany and completed seven years of classical French horn training before heading off to explore the world of music and the music of the world. Growing up, Ronan Skillen was encouraged to find his voice within music by his parents. And one year, they gifted him a tabla set for Christmas. Now, this soon became his instrument of choice through his journey of self-discovery. And I'm here in Colt Bay, Cape Town, to meet up with him before he jets off to Europe. He's a multi-skilled performer who currently specializes in hybrid percussion and the traditional Australian didgeridoo. Beautiful sounds emanating from you. Michelle, nice to meet you, man. Thank you so much for making time. It's a pleasure. Thanks for coming through. Hard at work rehearsing before you jet off to Europe. Indeed, I'm, I'm getting ready to hit the road again. Well, I definitely want to learn more about you and the tabla. Should we go through to the lounge? It's nice and warm in there. Perfect. Ronan, you've created the ideal spot to come and play the tabla. Absolutely. I mean, playing tabla is kind of if, if you create the right space, you can play it anywhere. Did playing the tabla come easily to you? Initially, I had never ever imagined that I'd actually play this instrument, but um, I think with, with the right guidance and being a, a lucky person that I've met a fantastic teacher, I've always been obsessed with the sound and this idea of percussion and drums and all that. I do believe that the tabla has a certain language. It's known as tabla language. So I'll just show you a couple of phrases. Um, ta, tin, terakita. Da din, da da terekita, da gena da ti da da terekita da. And they go on and on. Da terekita taka, da da terekita taka, da terekita taka, din na kita taka, da terekita taka, da da terekita taka, da terekita taka, din na kita taka, da terekita taka, da da terekita taka, da terekita taka, din na kita taka, da. Now the tabla always comes as a set, but do they have specific names? Left and right is literally uh, the direct translation. Dayan, Bayan. So, Bayan being left, Dayan being right. The Bayan can also be known as the dugi or the daga. And it's interesting how they're made. They're quite solid up until about here, which is unusual for drums, because the sound usually comes out the bottom, you know? Same on this one. Made of nickel-plated brass, rosewood, and the black, circle is made from iron filings and rice. Apart from time spent in South Africa, Ghana and Australia, Ronan also travelled to India to learn the art of the tabla from maestro Ustad Akram Khan. He's now introduced his Ajwara Garana style of percussion to the local music scene. As a professional musician, is the tabla your instrument of choice? Absolutely. It's an interesting thing because you wouldn't really expect the tabla to be one of those instruments that can just fit in everywhere. But thankfully I've had enough influences from all kinds of musical backgrounds in order to incorporate it into different genres. You've had the privilege of learning from some of the great maestros. What has that experience been like? Well, one in particular, yeah, absolutely. A guy called Akram Khan. He's one of the six greatest tabla masters in the world and I was really lucky to be invited by him to study in India. What a privilege. Why do you believe that the tabla is regarded as one of the most important drums and percussion instruments? It's a wonderfully diverse instrument. The melodic nature of it, the light touch that you get, the incredible groove that comes from the, the bass, you know. 
It's just a beautiful sound. It's known as the hardest of all percussion instruments. Well, I mean, you're here. I'd love to learn. Is that possible? I'd love to. Um, okay, so look, I'll put it in front of you. Okay. We should actually incorporate this. Okay, so this is the powder that you've been adding ever so little. Yeah, the, the, the reason for the powder is because um, you get this callus on your hand here. Take a tiny piece on, your, on, the, on the tip of your finger. Yeah. And just plonk it okay. on the drum. Yeah. Okay, plonking. Yeah. So if you put your hand on the drum. Okay, so just that, yeah. Yeah, and then bring it back. So slide it back and then your ring finger, you can feel there's a little lip there. Okay. Yeah. And on the very edge, just hit it lightly. Yeah, that would be ta. Is that ta? That is ta. I'm making music. Well, at the beginnings of ta. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we head out, maybe go down to the harbor? Great, I'd love to. It's a perfect sunny day. After you. Thanks. The space and surroundings that you find yourself in, how does that enhance you as a musician? It's a big part of what I do. And the influence of weather and the surroundings of Cork Bay and the water and people. It's a wonderful thing. Traveling the world though, how do you find your balance? Coming back always helps, but balance is like you need to be on point and expend a lot of energy. And then there are days where you don't have anything. Cork Bay is definitely the ideal place to watch the world go by. And I know you've got a favorite coffee shop that you're going to take me to. Indeed, it's just across the way. They make fantastic food as well. So maybe we can head out that way. Fantastic, let's yeah? do it. All right, cool. Kalk Bay has a long association with fishing and surfing, but it's also become something of an artist's colony, making it an ideal base for Ronan when he takes a break from tours and concerts. Ronan, any exciting projects that you can share with us? Absolutely. I'm working on a CD of my own, some music that I've been putting together. Uh, then I'm going to Europe. I'm going to be teaching and doing some workshops in Switzerland. I've got some concerts in Lithuania, a couple of things in England, and then I'm coming back to Joy of Jazz in Joburg, then going to Maputo. So there's a lot going on. And where do you hope to be in the next couple of years? I'd like to do more recordings. I've got a little studio at home. I really enjoy producing records. That part of the, the music industry really interests me as well. You kind of become the guy behind the scenes in a way. Ronan, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michelle. Lovely to have you.